Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. When we left off last time, we had gotten the title bar to work on our little GUI application. Let's go ahead and bring that up. And um, now what I'd like to do is some more cleanup, uh, just taking care of some of these things here. One of the big ones, well, maybe not big, but one of the things that's sort of a niggling left behind issue is to review and clear the list of tasks. So I think I'm going to do that. And the first and easiest one would be this one, where we've got the title um, just wrong. I think I'll make this, um, uh, I think I'll call it financial projector. Uh, that's a little grandiose, but I can't think of a better name right now. Let's make sure that works. Boy, my computer is running slow. All right, there we go. So there we've got our title. And um, the test should still work as well. I haven't done anything that changes that. OK. So now that that's working, I'm going to go through the rest of these little to-dos. Uh, these are leftover. Well, I did rename it to cell, so that's done. And this, this is unrelated entirely. I don't know why it's even in here, actually. It's not part of my working set. Hmm. That's from a little program that I play with, was playing with in my, my spare time, which I don't have much of these days, uh, to simulate D&D combats. But um, that is long since gone. I wonder if there's any way to... Hmm. Well, I guess I'll just have to leave that. Uh, heck, I'll just take it out. There. Done. Okay, so now, what should we do next? Well, let's take a look at the scratch pad. We've taken care of that. I'm not going to do the Windows um, stuff for a little while. So let me just add this down here. Um, Okay, so we've got the application should close when the window is closed. There's also some more polish left to do on the UI, um, but I think it's time to move on to something a little more interesting. I think what I'd like to do next, wow, this is taking forever to come up. What I would like to do next is actually get to the point where we can enter the starting balance, cost basis, and yearly sales. Uh, get this to the point where there's a bit more of a UI to it. So let's say that that's done for now. We'll go ahead and program this in fairly soon. Let's do this one first. Then maybe we'll take care of the at window closing. But once, once we've got that working, I think what I'd like to do is to add fields um, so that starting, the starting conditions uh, can be set at runtime. So right now, if you look at our application class, we've got all these values that are just sort of hard-coded. And what I'd like to do is have that be user editable. And then we'll start to get to the point where it looks like a real application. And I think once we have that done, then we can move on to making an actual distributable and have a complete vertical slice. Uh, the goal of all this, uh, here we are in what, episode 57? So the goal of this is to get to the point where we finished a complete vertical slice, which is one small amount of functionality that works from end to end. And um, we've been at this for a little over 14 hours, so I would love to get that vertical slice done by the end of the first week of work, at the end of the first 40 hours. It's entirely, entirely doable. So what I'm thinking is that we'll have a little application that is deployable, that runs well on Windows, runs well on the Mac, um, you know, can have a little icon, and that the user can type stuff in. So although it'll have very limited functionality, it'll actually be usable for the purpose we're using it. 
uh, for the purpose of what we've got. So um, getting those fields in, I think is it in terms of functionality, then it's just going to be a matter of getting that deployable working and all the annoying stuff that happens that always takes so long. Uh, and that's why we do this vertical slice, because there's all this annoying stuff, like getting the Mac to show the proper menu name, getting it to work on Windows, getting it to package up properly, getting it so you can run on a double click, getting an automated build. All these things are incredibly annoying. They're usually left to the end of a project, and at the end of the project, when you have a huge application, it takes weeks to get this stuff to work. So that's where we're going to do it first, it's, uh, as part of our getting our first vertical slice. But anyway, uh, enough, enough painting. Um, first thing to do is to make application no longer be a frame. So if you look at application, this is our little temporary app. We've got some hard-coded size and location. We've got, um, got it creating the table, and we have it setting up our initial model. So what I'd like to do is modify application frame so that it can do all of that for us. And in the meantime, I think what I will do is go ahead and change our main routine to use application frame rather than application. Okay, and here's our little mini app. So we need to make this work properly. Okay. All right. Let's do that. I think the first thing I'd like to do is have the application uh, set up the proper position and size. And let's see. this is all about the application window. So In the future, we might want to have it save this information off, but I don't want to start there. So let's see, what position do we want to give it? Let's just go ahead and use that. So 400 comma 300. My computer is running really slowly today. There we go. Now, what was the difference between get location and get location on screen? I'm guessing that for a frame, it's the same thing. So we want it to be 400, 300. That should fail. Yep, that failed just like I expected it to. And now we can have a pass. Great. And now I'm going to actually hard code. Get like that. Great. Okay, and I'm going to actually change this as well. Oh, did I make that private? No, I did not. There we go. That should still work. 
Yep. And then we'll do the same thing with the size. I think we want it to be 900 comma 400. And that should fail. And that should pass. Okay, and now if we run it, we should see our... There it is, exactly where it's supposed to be. Okay. So this is moving along pretty smoothly. Um, next, we want it to contain um, all of its components. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this code into a setup routine. That should still work. Yep. You can see the speed of those swing tests slowing us down, but it's not too bad. Uh, next, let's see. Well, we want it to contain a J frame, so let's just go ahead and um, just realize that was wrong. Uh, not so much a J frame, we want it to contain this forecast table. So let's go ahead and set that up. We ask the frame for its uh, content pane and then we say get components. Well there should only be, let's start out with a component count. The number of components uh, should be one, but was zero. Yep. Okay. And this, let's go ahead and pull that out into a local variable. And let's assert, well, first, that's going to fail. Yeah. So we can do this. We can say um, that will give us the correct number of components, but it'll be the wrong behavior. Yeah, so now we need a new test. This is a pretty weak uh, assertion, but it will work for now. Oh, there's components. We'll just do that. That will be easier to assert on. Looks like we're about out of time. Um, so let me get this in, make sure that still passes. Yep, that's it. Okay, thanks everybody. I'll see you next time.